All right, online Excel team, this is Flashback Friday. We're jumping back 10 years to a video I posted back in 2008, Excel Basics number four. And guess what? This video goes over the basics of both formulas and functions in 10 minutes. And all the tricks I taught 10 years ago are still equally fun and efficient for today. So check out this funny flashback back when I didn't have a good mic and I didn't even edit the videos. And leave some comments below about this Flashback Friday. Welcome to Excel Basic Series number four. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Basics. Hey, and number four here, we're going to talk more about formulas. Hey, we have an annual interest rate here, and we want to calculate a monthly rate. Well, let's click in the cell, and the symbol that tells Excel you're going to do a formula, equal sign. Now we're going to click on this cell right here with our mouse or use our up arrow. And then how do I get this from an annual to a monthly rate? I need to divide by 12. Well, the division symbol is forward slash. Now I don't see a 12 anywhere to click on like you're supposed to do with Excel formulas. So I'm just going to type it in. But wait a second. That violates the original idea that Bricklin and Frankston had for spreadsheets. Well, guess what? It's perfectly all right. See, this annual rate can change up and down, and so you put that into a cell. But the number 12, which is the number of months in a year, is not going to change anytime soon. So you can go ahead and type that right into the formula. And that's it. That's the rule. When the data varies, put it into a cell and put a label. If it doesn't, you can go ahead and hard code it right into your formula. I'm going to hit enter. Now the effective annual rate. Now I'm going to do it two ways. Um, I'm going to do it the math way first. I'm going to type an equal sign and then I'm going to type an open parentheses that's shift 9 1 plus shift 0 which is whoops 1 plus and I need to take this monthly rate there so you can use your uh, selection cursor your up arrow and then I'm going to close parentheses. So it's adding those two. It's forcing order of operations. It says add those two first. And then I'm going to shift six, which is caret. Now you know why Bugs Bunny is so good at exponents in math. Yeah, that caret is exponent. And now I'm going to put 12, because there's 12. And it, you're, it's OK to hard code that in, minus 1. That's the formula to figure out the effective annual rate. Now I'm going to hit tab. Notice I'm going to go over and do another formula here so it's most efficient to hit tab instead of enter and then taking your cursor and clicking this way. Now I'm going to use do a different formula. Here I used the knowledge of math, but there's actually built-in functions that will do things for you. So I don't know what the function would be for effective annual rate, so I'm going to look up here. This is the formula bar, and that right there is f of x, and if you click it, it inserts, brings up the dialog box for insert function. Now I'm going to type a description here, effective rate, and then hit enter. Now the way this works is it'll recommend some things, and you've got to click on each one and then read the description returns the effective annual interest rate. That sounds good. If I'm not sure, I might click here. Returns the annual nominal interest rate. No, no. Rate returns the interest rate per period of a loan or, for example, no PV, no. So it's not any of those. But that's how you can search. And you won't believe all the functions they have. If you're in, just there's lots of them. So I, I did my little homework. I searched through them. I found the one I want. So now I'm going to double click or click OK. Now it says the nominal rate. Well, that happens to be our annual interest rate right there. And what if I didn't know? Oh, look, down here. Each one of these arguments, as they're called, has a description. Nominal rate is the nominal interest rate. Well, that doesn't help much. But the APR, the annual interest rate, is, uh, is the nominal rate. Now we can hit Tab to move to the next uh, text box, NPERY. I have no idea what that means, but no problem is the number of compounding periods per year. Oh, that's 12. So I'm going to type 12. 
Now notice a couple of great things here. It shows you a preview of what it sees over here. And it shows you the result here and here. Let's go ahead and click OK. And sure enough, there are two ways to do the same thing. Now I'm going to hit F2 here. Is this a formula? You bet it is, because it has an equal sign. Is this a formula that uses a built-in function? You bet it is. The other built-in function we've already seen is, is sum, auto sum. I'm going to click Escape. Now let's go ahead and see if we can do some more formulas down here. Price of a car and down payment. I'm going to click in this cell, and I'm going to subtract the two to get loan amount. Equals arrow, arrow, minus one arrow. You could also use your um, mouse to get those. And Enter. Now let's go over here and calculate our monthly interest rate. Equals that cell right there divided by 12. Remember, it's OK to hard code that in, because that 12 won't change. Now I'm just going to type 60 here. Uh, 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 uh. The alarm goes up. That is not how you do it. Even if you instinctively do that, forget it. <clears throat> because it's based on year, number of years, and that number could change, you want to do a formula. Equals that, and what is it? Times 12 months. And we can hard code that in. Now we can do our payment for uh, monthly payment. Now I'm going to do this trick again here. This is great. Practice. Go hunt for all the functions you could possibly ever want. Click here, and I'm going to type monthly payment. It says PMT. Calculates the payment for a loan based on a constant payments and content interest rate. Yep. Is PMT. Returns the interest paid during a specific period. Now that just hacks apart the actual total payment and figures how much the banker steals as interest. I mean, contractually extracts. We don't want that one. Rate, et cetera. There's lots of them. The PMT happen to be just fine. It doesn't always come up on top, so it pays to know how to go through these and read this. I'm going to click uh, OK or uh, double click. Now rate, what do I want? Is the interest rate per period for the loan? For example, use 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. Now, when you see these little collapsible boxes here, it means you can go get the uh, cell references. So rate, it's definitely not this one. It's going to be the monthly interest rate. And the way it works for a finance function like this is all the uh, pieces have to be in the same period, so monthly. Now I'm going to click here is the total number of payments for the loan. OK, so that's over here. And PV is the present value. Now this is finance, so it's hard to figure this out if you didn't have any finance. You could actually click on this help on this function, and the help in the help on this function is just incredible. They actually, you know, Microsoft help isn't always good, but the help in the functions dialog is just awesome. I've taught myself about hundreds of these functions, which I have no idea how to use by just clicking here. But PV just means how much the loan is, so I'm going to click right there. Now I'm going to click OK. Sure enough, it comes up. Mine, what's that? What's going on there? Hey, that's formatting. Um, it, it, uh, in accounting, those parentheses means uh, a, a minus. And in finance, since the monthly payment is going out of your pocket, that finance function actually calculates it as a minus. Now, that's a little bit about um, calculating formulas. Now I want to look at um, a text formula. Because what we'd like is a label up here that says the monthly payment is and that. And we want our formula linked here. So as we change these inputs, the label will change also. So I'm going to type an equal sign. And I need to put some text into a formula. And text always has to go in quotes. Double quote the, and I'm going to end double quote. Notice I have a space there. And now I'm going to use the join symbol that we saw in our last video. That join symbol means I can join things. I'm going to click on this cell right here. So, so far it's going to be the monthly payment. And I have to join something else, ampersand double quote, and now I need a space. And when you're doing these text formulas, it takes a while. And I'm going to leave that space out just to show you how easy it is to edit. But so far, I have the monthly payment. So I have to put is space and double quote ampersand. And then I'm going to click on this cell right here. 
So now I've joined one, two, three, four things. I'm going to hit Enter. Oh, well, it's uh, stringing together there. I'm going to click the uh, F2 key and then add a space there. Now, that's kind of unsightly there. So we can click here and hit F2. And there's actually a special function that converts uh, messy numbers to currency format. So we're going to type dollar, open parentheses. And I'm going to put a minus sign so this doesn't turn out minus in our uh, label here and close parentheses. That dollar function, which I'm not typing correctly, that dollar function, if I hit Enter, will convert it. Let me just end by doing that. And we will see you next video.